Uh, you cannot accuse me of insurrection. I was a victim of the January 6th riot just as much as any other member of Congress. That was the third day I had on the job. I had nothing to do with what happened there that day, and I will not have you accuse me of that. That is wrong of you to do. You're lying about me, and you will not defame my character in that manner. Did Joe Biden win the election, Congresswoman Green? Joe Biden is the president of the United States. Absolutely, Marcus. but you pushed a big lie that said he did not win the election. There was and election fraud. You drove those proven. people to the Capitol fraud. on January 6th with fraud. your the 2020 lie. Election. We're going to move on. Josh Rowe, it's election your turn fraud. to ask and my the question to Marjorie proof of Taylor Green. We have okay. FOIA evidence, me. a proof of election fraud that came out. Excuse me. We're ready to move on to the next okay, question but for he's you. Not going to accuse me of a crime. Would you like I your question? Would one. you like your question? Yes, ma'am, I you. would. Thank you. You just watched Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene throw a temper tantrum on stage when her Democratic opponent had the audacity to suggest that she played a role in the January 6th insurrection. She's claiming now that like all of her colleagues in Congress, she was also a victim. Now, this is history revisionism. And the thing about trying to be a history revisionist is that you have to try to revision history at a time where we can't remember it. So that way you have some room to obfuscate. But this just happened a couple of years ago, Marjorie. So we could just look back at the tapes, which we will do, by the way, and see that you're lying. And the biggest tell there was when she said, or wouldn't say rather, that Joe Biden won the election. And I love the way that she presented um, so-called evidence that exists of fraud. She says that her husband, who's divorcing her, by the way, has the proof. Okay, well, why didn't he provide us with the proof? So you just, you're sitting on this information. The same is true with individuals like Kari Lake, where they say that they have evidence, but they won't present it to us. And whenever you see the evidence from these individuals who deny the 2020 election, it's usually nonsensical. No basis for it. Now, I've just got to ask this question. For all of these insurrectionists who are in Congress, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, you're in the state of Georgia. You claim, and Trump claims, that this state was stolen from him. But why is it that Democrats, when they decided to rig this election supposedly against Joe Biden, forgot to rig it against you? They rigged it against Trump, but they let you win? Wouldn't they also try to rig it against you as well if they're already going out of their way to break the law? It just, it makes no sense. And that's because She's lying, and she's lying about her role in the insurrection as well. She absolutely helped Trump incite that insurrection. Now, Chuds of TikTok shared a mashup of her comments from 2020 with her comments during that debate. I think that this was actually a compilation that was put together by Marcus Flowers' team. Either way, this proves that she is a liar. If we flood the Capitol building, go inside. Uh, you cannot accuse me of insurrection. The people who breached the Capitol on January 6th are being abused. I was a victim of the January 6th riot just as much as any other member of Congress. Tomorrow on January 6th, I'm very excited. This is our 1776 moment. That was the third day I had on the job. I had nothing to do with what happened there that day, and I will not have you accuse me of that. Just finished with our meetings here at the White House this afternoon. We got a, had a great planning session, January 6th, objection. That is wrong of you to do. You're lying about me and you will not defame my character in that manner. Call your House reps, call your senators from your states. We've got to make sure they're on board and we already have a lot of people engaged. Did Joe Biden win the election, Congresswoman Green? Joe Biden is the president of the United States. Absolutely. Marcus. President Trump won by a landslide. But you pushed a big lie that said he did not win the election. We aren't going to let this election be stolen by Joe Biden and the Democrats. There was and election fraud. You drove those proven. people to the Capitol fraud. on January 6th with your lie. You can't allow it to just transfer if we power flood the Capitol peacefully or being abused. This is our 1776 moment. So that ad is absolutely brutal because it proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that she was lying at that debate. It's just that Republican voters don't seem to care about lies or the truth. So it's really not going to matter. It's not like they're going to see, oh, OK, she wasn't really being honest with us and then think, all right, well, I guess I'm not going to vote for her. Unfortunately, we're in a post-truth era where people don't necessarily vote for candidates based on 
who they want to get elected because of the policies that they're espousing. It's just, oh, your team is my team, Team Red. Okay, well, I'm going to vote for you no matter what, even if you've proven time and again that you're a liar. And if you're lying about this, then you're probably lying about other things. It's uh, it's really sad because the standards are so low. And, you know, in normal political times, she would be thoroughly embarrassed because she was just debunked. But instead, she took to Instagram to declare herself the winner of the debate after she made a fool of herself. But I mean, that's modern American politics for you, where there's no admissions of guilt or being caught in a lie you just kind of move past it and declare yourself the winner the winner and that's that's it and for her to declare herself the winner i'm just going to go out on a limb here and say that she's probably not the most impartial judge for that now you know she has claimed consistently that the 2020 election was rigged against trump but for some reason conspicuously not against her although she is the victim of rigging because apparently this debate is rigged and you'll see that as she sparred with the uh moderator of this debate and accused him of being a democrat activist what can you tell me give me an example no you do this every time we have a debate where you ask, i ask a, a question that's obvious and you're like what you mean you were kicked off of your committees for saying things were controversial you've apologized for controversial statements right those types of things. What is your process for fact checking and vetting the things that you say in public? I, the, the things I say in public are the truth, and that's why they're so offensive to Democrat activists in the media just like you. And you're asking me a blanket question with no example. I stand by the things that I say. Classy. So in other words, she has no process for fact checking herself, and that's because why would you need one when you just lie compulsively about everything? If you don't like the way that you're portrayed, well, despite what you said, just keep lying through it. This is the modern Republican Party strategy. And you'll be shocked to know, I'm sure, that the lies did not stop there. So in this next clip, next clip she's going to basically go on a lie speed run where she tells lie after lie after lie about the Democratic Party, each being more preposterous uh, than the other. Take a look. It's you're a father and you are a representative of the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party is the party of child abuse. It's the party that represents grooming children and sexualizing them in school, teaching anti-white racism in the terms of CRT education and genital mutilation of kids, kids that can't even get a driver's license, can't get a tattoo and cannot vote. How do you stand there and represent the Democrat Party as a father? And do you believe in genital mutil mutilation of children under the age of 18? And, and these puberty blockers that have severe health consequences. Time for your Because I have re I've introduced a bill to ban it and make it a felony to, genital to mutilate children's genitals. Do you stand by that? Now we'll just pause it right there and get to his response in a moment because I think that what he said in response to that was good because it's hard to respond when so many lies are being blasted at you at once. So how do you actually effectively respond? I think that he had a great response. But I just got to ask her about this bill that she claims bans genital mutilation of children. Does it also include circumcision? Because as of 2010, more than 50% of male infants are circumcised without their consent. This is an irreversible procedure. So you think that if she's concerned with genital mutilation, that would extend to circumcision, but it doesn't for some reason, which tells you that this is just about, hey, she's targeting trans people because they are a social pariah currently, and she's fighting to uh, demonize them in order to galvanize her base. That's exactly what this is about now she goes on to cite all of the uh, different problems with the democratic party grooming sexualization i wonder if she's going to say anything about child marriages that are legal in a number of states going to condemn condemn that marjorie green no because she's just blasting everyone with a bunch of talking points from the gop a lot of uh wedge issues propagandistic issues such as crt and whatnot that she's using to galvanize voters now you can't possibly respond to and debunk every single claim that she's making, but the way that Marcus Flowers handled that, I think, was really good. Boy, that, that was a lot. And God bless you, Marjorie Taylor Greene. If you truly believe that, that I'm praying for you. You know, I believe in this country. I believe in our democracy. And I believe in standing up for human rights. People come up to me every day and tell me how they feel attacked by you. And yes, I'm talking about children in our LGBTQ plus community. Every day, Congresswoman Green, seniors, Latinos, blacks, men and women, every day, this is how she treats the people of Northwest Georgia and the people, people of America, attacks, 
constantly attacking. That's not representative, Green. You represent them. That, I think, is a really solid response. Um, you can't possibly address each and every single claim. This is why Republicans are so effective at debates, in my opinion. It's because they don't actually have any facts on their side. They just lie. But when you kind of gish gallop and you throw out a bunch of lies, you make it so your opponent can't possibly address all of those claims. But what he did was simply say, look, these are your constituents. She's demonized essentially every single marginalized group in the country, Jewish people, trans people, LGBTQ plus people. And those are her constituents as well, like it or not. She may not want to represent them, but she does. She has constituents who are trans. She has constituents who are Jewish. She represents them. So if you don't actually want to represent your constituents, you shouldn't be a member of Congress. But, you know, this isn't about representation to her. This is about self-aggrandizement and trying to shift the country to the uh, far right because that's what she wants to do. So I don't have any more clips for you. I just wanted to show you what happens when you see extremists debate. You think that individuals like Marjorie Taylor Greene, because they're so stupid and bombastic, they wouldn't be able to handle themselves appropriately in a debate. And even though she made a fool of herself, it doesn't matter at the end of the day because when you are lying, you are going to have a lot easier easier of a time debating your opponent. Marcus Flowers, he is restricted by what is and isn't true. So he can't just make a claim if he doesn't believe it or if he knows that it's not true. Whereas with Marjorie Taylor Greene, if she doesn't like what he says, she can just say no, even if she knows that she's lying. Because for Republican Party voters, being a liar isn't disqualifying anymore. Just simply being a member of their team is enough for them. And she's not the only candidate where this is demonstrated. Herschel Walker is another example. But that's Marjorie Taylor Greene's debate with Marcus Flowers. I'm honestly a little bit shocked that she decided to debate him in the first place, seeing that this is a pretty solidly Republican-leaning district. Either way, she did it, and she made a fool of herself. But it's not going to harm her at all. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC... I stopped watching, so I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.